What's up guys? Today we'll be talking about um, chemical energetics and in this video um, I will give you an overview of um, chemical energetics meaning the energies that are involved in chemical reactions and we will mainly talk about two terms today exothermic and endothermic so I'll show you what these terms mean in terms of a chemical reaction so let's get to it our topic is chemical energetics and in particular exothermic and endothermic right we'll be looking into the meanings of these two terms so some reactions give off energy meaning when you touch the test tube they feel warm whereas other reactions take in energy so when you touch the test tube it feels cold so let's take an example here okay so I'm going to have a beaker into which I put a thermometer okay that's my thermometer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a strip of magnesium at the bottom of the beaker. So here's my strip of magnesium. And then I'll pour in some hydrochloric acid. So I'll take a, another beaker. Right, and then I'll pour in some HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. And what I'll see is that as the reaction proceeds, I'll see some bubbles coming off here. So what's happening is that I'm having my magnesium, right? Here's my magnesium, react with the aqueous hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride aqueous and the process give off some hydrogen gas so that's the gas that you see coming off there um, that's the hydrogen gas but the most important thing I want you to note is that if you were to actually do this experiment in the lab you'll find that the temperature rises okay so you see here that the temperature rises. So what does that mean? That means that this reaction mixture is giving off heat to the environment and the thermometer is a part of the environment. So the heat is being transferred from the reaction to the thermometer. That means heat is given off by the reaction okay so this means that heat is given off by reaction to the thermometer now in this sorts of reaction where heat is given off from the reaction to the environment we call these types of reaction an exothermic reaction okay so that's the definition of an exothermic reaction it's a reaction in which heat is given off from the reaction mixture to the environment so what does this mean for the reacting mixture itself or the reacting solution well it must mean that because it's given off heat to the environment it must mean that the energy of the system must drop so because heat is given off the energy of the system must drop okay so we can represent that using an energy diagram and draw a diagram here with energy 
on the y-axis and I will represent this line to be my reactants and the energy of the system drops so when it forms the products the energy of the products are actually at a lower level than the energy of the reactants so reactants are up here products are down here energy was given off and hence the energy of the system drops so this is called an energy level diagram and this is how you would draw it for an exothermic reaction with the reactants up here and the products down here at a lower energy now let's take a look at a different sort of reaction we'll take a look at an endothermic reaction one where the energy is um, absorbed by the system so for an endothermic reaction I'm going to choose for my reaction um, I'll choose baking soda and citric acid so I'm going to have um, baking soda and citric acid these guys will react to form um, sodium citrate with the liberation of carbon dioxide gas and water so baking soda is what you use in uh, to make bread rise or to fry bananas make pancakes etc citric acid you can get from fruit juice so this is something you can actually do at home and let's see what happens if I would actually do this so I'll take some baking soda dissolve it in a little bit of water and put it in a beaker now have my thermometer here as usual and then I'll pour in some citric acid so what you see happen is that when you pour in the citric acid bubbles will form and that bubbles those bubbles are of course the carbon dioxide gas that resulted and what you will see is that the temperature as the reaction proceeds the temperature will start to drop oops temperature will start to drop right and this must mean that energy is being taken in by the system. So I say that energy is absorbed by the system. And when energy is absorbed by the system, we call this an exo, I beg your pardon, we call this an endothermic reaction. Okay, so endothermic reaction is for reactions in which energy is absorbed by the system. Now because of that, because energy is absorbed by the system, this must mean that the um, energy uh, of the system will increase. because energy is taken in therefore um, they must end up with a higher energy so once again I can represent this on an energy level diagram like so energy on the y-axis so I'm gonna have my reactants here my reactants being the um, baking soda and citric acid and my products will be the sodium citrate so I'm gonna have my products at a higher energy because having absorbed energy from the environment they now have greater energy so I'm gonna draw them further up the energy level 
diagram. So this arrow is to represent that they've gone from a lower energy as reactants to a higher energy as products and in the process absorbing energy right so that's an energy level diagram for an endothermic reaction as a side note um, there are several other uh, reactions that are endothermic so some examples are let me just list them out here photosynthesis synthesis right so photosynthesis um, if you could actually carry out photosynthesis in a test tube and you touch it you feel that it, it, it's cold it's absorbing energy from your skin and another example is the decomposition of calcium carbonate to form calcium carbonate is limestone and when calcium carbonate decomposes it forms um, calcium oxide and liberates carbon dioxide gas right so those are two examples of reactions that are endothermic now um, as a concluding statement I like to look at how you can actually start these reactions off right certain reactions you need to give them a little kick start before they can start um, certain reactions can just start off on their own so starting off we say that something is spontaneous reaction is spontaneous if it starts on its own, right? So it starts as soon as the uh, reactants are mixed. So a case in point is my first example on the exothermic reaction um, between magnesium and hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride with the liberation of hydrogen gas. So that was a spontaneous reaction. Certain exothermic reactions require some heat to get it to start, right? So, exo heat to start. So, just because it's exo, it's giving off heat, doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't need some heat in the beginning to start it off. But the moment it starts, once it's started off, then it will continue to release heat. So an example is the burning of magnesium and oxygen to form magnesium oxide. And then yet other reactions, um, certain endothermic reactions, uh, require heat throughout the reaction. So an example of this is the decomposition of calcium carbonate. So it needs to be constantly heated in order to uh, decompose it to calcium carbonate um, I beg your pardon in order to decompose it to calcium oxide with the liberation of carbon dioxide gas okay so that was it in this video we talked about um, how to define exothermic and endothermic reactions in the next video we'll take a look at uh, how how reactions actually become exo or endo in terms of the energies contained within the bonds of the reactants and the products.